I call this August 1st meeting of the Paducah Planning and Zoning Commission to order and ask that you please stand and say with us the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Summer. You call the roll, please. Mr. Benberry? Here. Mr. Bradford? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Ms. Shramke? Here. Mr. Shadel? Here. Mr. Wade? Chair Grisillas? Here. Ms. Shramke, you have the minutes motion? I do. I move that the reading of the minutes for, Ju for July 18th, 2016 be waived and the minutes of the said meeting as prepared by the secretary be approved as written. Second. Second by Bradford and Morrison. <laughs> Any corrections, changes? Call the roll, please. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadel? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Mr. Shadel, you have the small wood investments? Yes. I move that this commission receive and file the application of Smallwood Investments, LLC, for the proposed free subdivision of property located at 118 Medcalf Lane. I further move that the requested approval be given in compliance with all applicable provisions of the Paducah Subdivision Ordinance be waived. Second. Second by Schramke. I'm with Dummer Surveying and Engineering. If y'all have any questions regarding the property, I'll answer it for you. Pretty straightforward. We're subdividing off a small lot here noted as Track 2 off of a larger track. And you're dedicating? Yes, we are dedicating right away. Five, five foot of right away on Metcalf Lane. Kind of incidental, but are they removing the fencing? There's some fencing there too, isn't there? Uh, yes, there's some fencing. There's a garage that's being torn down, also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all that's coming out. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just curious. The entire site's going to be cleared. Uh, is the house going to be cleared as well? I think so. I'm sure that the people who are purchasing these two tracks are aware of the flood hazard boundary that mm -hmm. that's been pointed out to them. Yes. Any other questions, comments? Call the roll, please. Ma'am. Mr. Shadel? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Abstain. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Mr. Morrison, you have the Open Door Baptist Church conditional use recommendation? Yes, ma'am, I do. I move that this commission recommend approval to the Board of Adjustment regarding the application of Open Door Baptist Church for a conditional use permit for musical instruction by individuals or groups, ensemble, rehearsal, and or performance space, piano workshops, showroom space, weddings, meetings, rehearsal, recital, performance space for other studios and a place for churches to temporarily gather. I further move that the following conditions be forwarded to the Board of Adjustment to be placed on the property. More than one fourth of the building may be used for musical instruction. More than one student may rehearse at one time. Weddings, meetings, rehearsal, recital, Performance space for other studios and temporary church gatherings may be permitted, provided these activities remain subordinate to the primary use of a residence with musical instruction. I further find that these types of activities generally take place in churches and therefore may be permissible in this specific request. Second. Second by Ben Berry. 
Open Door Baptist Church is the actual application uh, on this tonight. They're working with Mr. and Ms. Blewett that's here tonight to, to sell the property, and they would actually own and operate the home occupation of musical uh, instruction and recitals and things like that. The sanctuary and fellowship hall is about 3,300 square feet, and the brick building in the back would be the residence that they would turn into an apartment. Is the residence currently set up as a residence? No, they'd have to remodel it. Okay. And Mr. and Ms. Blewett, please feel free to jump in if I leave please, anything in. Please. You've basically stated what we we are planning on doing, using the building. Uh, so it... Uh, on the residential part of it, uh, is it extensive remodeling involved, or what condition is it in? Well, the Sunday school wing is what we're planning on using. Uh, primarily, the first floor would be converted into an apartment, and uh, not much other than kitchen. kitchen. Uh, the kitchen will be the primary you know, construction. Um, they, they have sink facilities, but n not the you know, normal appliances and things of that sort. Uh, uh, but you know, just a regular Sunday school room will suffice for a bedroom, you know, that kind of thing. So it's not going to be major uh, renovation. Uh, there will be no renovation on the exterior of the building. We, we want to keep it, keep the character of the building as is. One other question I had was concerning, I know that you're planning on allowing people to have weddings. Are you going to have like any kind of reception hall? Will that be a part of the service that you offer? The re if there was a reception, it would be in the fellowship hall. Uh, and that is a very small fellowship hall. So it would have to be a small wedding uh, it, if they wanted to have the reception there. Uh, but other than that, you know, more than likely they would go to a larger venue for a, for that kind of. How, how many residents are you talking about in that? Just us. I, just <laughs> us. Oh, okay, just one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I thought we were talking about multiple families. No, oh, no. and we do not have children of our own, so it would just be the two of us, and we'd be on site. So it, if there was an issue with someone coming in for a uh, renting the facility, we would be right there on top. On of it. site, yes. Um, do you have plans for the second floor of the Sunday School building? Guest suites? <laughs> <laughs> Storage. Storage. Like, yeah, yes. Uh, I didn't know if you were going to have other rooms for, uh, you know, teaching uh, or... The reason why I ask is typically I've seen in the past that this has happened and over time it becomes a, a mini mall, if you will, just oh. one bedroom, rent places with shared baths, shower facilities, moves over to the sanctuary because that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And then its intended use originally is expanded and before really the city knows that this has happened. I'm so. not sharing. <laughs> Uh, that, that's one of the main reasons why we were wanting to move into a space like this. We've been looking for a while. We, we've been borrowing space at our uh, respective churches, and we get bumped because of scheduling conflicts of the church. So we needed a space of our own so we don't have that conflict. So will you own this property? Is that yes, sir. a fair question? And, uh, mm -hmm. it, I just so I know, the brown building that is attached, the newer portion of yes. the facade, is that the fellowship hall? That's the that Sunday the, school wing. That's right. the Sunday school wing, okay. The fellowship is that hall where is you're going to be living? In the Sunday school wing? Is yes. that what I yes. understood? Yes. Okay. The fellowship hall is in the basement below the sanctuary. Okay, there is a basement, okay. Yes. That was another question. And you'll be doing music in, instructions, correct, Jill? Yes. And uh, so currently you are, you are teaching music and approximately uh, how many students do you have currently? I have roughly 30 students that I teach at home, and our, and our group lessons are, as he said, at different churches so that we have enough room. 
Well, and room wasn't the only uh, concern of mine. Parking, I mean, is that adequate for any kind of functions or the teaching or whatever you're going to do with the place? Because I saw there's two different areas of parking. Yes, ma'am. Yes, th this church was, the former church, church is in the history, uh, had m much larger uh, membership than what we are okay. planning with our current studio. Uh, so any size of event, you know, such as a wedding, meeting, that such, would be uh, the parking that we have, the gravel lot plus the grass uh, backyard, I guess you could say, uh, could be utilized and should not have any problems there. Can you explain to me how group lessons work? Is this like dueling pianos or is it something like that? It could different? be. I teach violin mostly and uh, with the Suzuki method and it does in fact require that we all get together and play our songs and it trains them so that they're ready for orchestra. When we all get together and play. I've seen the Suzuki method before. It is fascinating how children learn. So it's great. I've been by that church several times and always have difficulty finding it. I guess maybe my GPS isn't working correctly. Uh, but uh, I was surprised to see or hear uh, somewhere along the line that this church is not as old as it appears. Uh, it was built in the late 30s from st stones from the old post office. From the old post office, uh, yes. Interesting. And the Sunday school wing was added 60s, in the 60s. In the 60s. Uh, so uh, mm. and, uh, there are still members of Trinity United Methodist out in Blandville can remember when that uh, when that wing was added. So uh, we have connections with the history of that building. And how long has it been empty? Or, okay. uh, it's been empty. Since March? Uh, it's several months. Okay. Uh, several months. Better than years. Correct. Yes. <laughs> they have been keeping it up. Uh, it, it is, the yard is regularly uh, taken care of. Uh, uh, of course, there are TLC items with any church, any building that age that we'll have to take care of, and we'll be applying for building permits uh, after we purchase the building. But we felt that and we had to go through this process first because there would be no reason for us to purchase it if we couldn't use it the way we wanted. <laughs> right. True. Uh, another question. You had mentioned a showroom. Yes. It's kind of, <coughs> obviously, it's not for cars. We, is, and I, I don't want to just make an assumption that it's all musical instruments, but is that what you have kind of... Well, uh, her line of the business is the instruction, I am a piano technician. Uh, that's my okay. part. Of business and I get clients regularly that just want to give me a piano because they want to get rid of it yeah. and well the pianos need a little TLC yes. I, I need to have space to work and then I would uh, work on fix them up and then one room to have uh, general public if they want to come in and say oh I would like this piano uh, I, I would do primarily by appointment because uh, I have other jobs besides this. My day job, I drive a, a school bus for McC McCracken County. Okay. So uh, the showroom would be open by appointment. Right. Um, so. so as not to interrupt And then my another, another question is signage. Have you folks thought about, uh, and that may come about in another meeting another time, but it we won't were, affect the facade in any way. No, we are we are planning on using the current sign. And I don't remember, unfortunately, I don't remember where that signage it, is. It, it is, is the at the corner, corner of uh, Farley and Clements, okay. right there on the corner. It is not lit. Uh, it is just a basic billboard type sign. And you can put lettering on it, yes. or is it that type where you can? Yeah, there is. Um, not movable lettering. No, not movable. No. Okay. No. So you'll have to get it painted or something. Right. We'll have to have it refaced. Refaced. Yeah. But so, wouldn't but change much of. No. Right. It, Thank you. It'd be an existing non-conforming sign. Right. Meaning it can be maintained and repainted stuff like that since it's already. Could they add a light if they desired, or is that something you'd have to come back to our? They'd have to get approval. For mm -hmm. So, so if we had a solar-powered light to shine up on it, that that would be require approval. Probably from the Board of Adjustment, 
at okay. that point since you because the next step after tonight is for the actual public hearing at the Board of Adjustment and that's where they can make that okay Okay. Good. They need an occupancy, like uh, maximum and minimum for meetings and so yes. forth. The fire department will hand yes. that out. That, that has already been uh, explained to us. Uh, I have already called the uh, pl the two departments downstairs to come out and give us a uh, consultation. Uh, they spent an hour with us, and so we are already aware of the code violations prior. Uh, they, they found some code violations with the church uh, a couple of years ago and so we are already aware of those concerns and that they will be addressed post. so the parking places or spaces will be uh, based on that whatever that occupancy is well it'd be based on just the home occupation as far as how many students would be coming at one time well, well I'm getting at if you use a sanctuary for a meeting or um, or something or if anything what if we have 200 people come or 80 I know we got two gravel lots but we have no idea of what that occupancy is if it's a place this big and someone uses it for um, a wedding and you have 150 people there with gravel lots do we know how many spaces are I know we know how many is needed but how many is there or will there be any being a gravel lot I'm, I'm not sure, but they do have that large grass area in the back along Jared. Yeah. This back see. here too that goes down. Typically, they won't. Typically, About 240 feet of frontage on that. Yeah. Typically, people won't park in the grass for at a wet. Mm -hmm. They're going park on the street and, and grab where they want to get. We in the would grass. we would have parking attendants. To help with that because as with a gravel lot it's very difficult to uh, to know which park where parking spots are right. and just to help take care of the confusion and chaos right. uh, we would have someone there uh, during that time do you have any idea how many events you hope to have a year that is a new part of our business so uh, we, we were wanting to do that part of the business, be, uh, to add that because our current business probably would not cover, uh, the income from that would probably not cover all of the expenses that we would need. So it would give us a little extra cushion. So it, it would not be our primary uh, form of business. It would just, but if someone say, hey, we need a place to have a uh, wedding, we have the place available. Um, and I, I see that as happening. That's what I'm saying with event centers. If we do this with one event center and this turns into an event center and then the standards are not the same between both in parking spaces and how they're configured, then um, it's just a little disparity in how we handle the same thing at two different locations based on planning. With the occupancy rate, not rollover that's from what it is now yeah and if we knew what the membership previously was I would think give us a rough idea does anyone know what the membership was at its high point was 150 200 I think it has seating for 200 in in the sanctuary okay but that doesn't mean membership could have been 10 most churches don't have parking enough parking for no. the right parishioners. Yeah, especially street, in the it's city. All, it's on street parking, too. Yeah, yeah. But especially in the city. My, my church is over on South 6th, right. and, and uh, we're having, on larger act, uh, uh, gatherings, we have to park over across the street at the school. So, The, the parking calculation is one stall for every three seats. Right. For every 30? Three. 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 Yeah. Do you know how many seats are in? I'm thinking about 200. 600 seats. I mean, parking. Yeah, you need 66 if it was full to capacity. Mm -hmm. But that's an estimate. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure on that. But as I understand it, so I, I've got it clear from those questions, good questions. Um, it's for residency, so 
they only need one parking place technically right. for this whole area but they could have 150 people at an event and you know if they decided to change all that gravel to something else uh, as homeowners mm -hmm. residential you know falls under a different I mean I, I, I see the point uh, maybe the Board of Adjustment will see that as well should we make a note or something to that yes you certainly can um, to, as far as paving the parking lot something well like I, just just to make sure that that kind of at least recorded in there considered in there so that if this does you know maybe that part of your business takes off and it becomes an event center I mean it's, it's a beautiful building right and it has that potential becomes an event center and now you're faced with um, what to do with that and because we're looking at it now totally as a resident residential with yeah some modification but actually it's really not it's a residence plus an event center plus uh, musical instruction plus so it's, it could be I just things. know when I go around town looking for an event space you know there there are times when whew, it's really hard to find something um, that's a good location for it. Yeah, it's a good location. It's good. I hope so, that does well. So should we be looking at two separate issues? I mean, should we be looking at approval of what they're here for, the residential, and then at a later date, if it becomes an event center, then it would come back to us or go to the Board of Adjustment or go to Well, it, it couldn't become an event center on its own, being a home occupation. Uh, the way that I've structured uh, the motion and the staff report. Those items, weddings, meetings, events, those all have to be subordinate to the primary use of uh, okay. of a residence of musical instruction. And that kind of takes care of that to your, it, so if it, if it, it should. Uh, and of course, just to let you all know, if we go out there and we see a ton of cars I'm the one that sits out the nasty letters. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's going to hold a bunch of cars. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure we hold the standard the same for everybody that's doing this type of thing, so it's not absolutely uh, different for everybody. Having been on the property several times, even back when it was open door, I, I trained the former pastor how to drive a school bus. The, the uh, parking lot is very sizable. You can actually turn the bus around in that parking lot without having to back up. So it, it is a very sizable parking lot. Uh, I call it a Texas size parking lot because it, it takes a Texas size parking lot to turn a bus around. Are you all going to have it paved? Is it plans to pave it? Not initially, no, because uh, that would be more expense. Uh, you know, if we find that, I guess, you know, if we need to, you know, that decision will come. But uh, if weddings bring in enough money for it, then I guess we'll pay it. Yeah. But, uh, I think <laughs> Recitals right don't bring in quite that much. No. Uh, currently, the parking lot probably needs a little TLC, even with the current gravel, because there's grass growing it's all right. so, uh, through the gravel. So that probably will eventually have to be addressed just in that. That figure I gave you, 40000 is the lot behind. The grass, so the, lot. Lot. the grass lot. Oh, just the grass lot. So no, that could be the, the gravel lot. could be expanded if they had to. You know, that'd be the most inexpensive way to move right. forward would yeah. be to get that forty thousand square foot added. And Most people are not parking in the grass. So no. They're for a way. No, they're not no, parking. No, not in no. And from what my understanding is, the church, yeah. former churches used all of that when they had large gatherings like for Christmas and Easter. You know, that that's how they handled it. And of course, there there is some, not much, some street curbside parking. Uh, of course, that would, you know, that would probably be more suitable for our handicap kind of situation. 
I think it would be a, maybe the right thing to do to say if the business expanded into an event center for it to to be in that uh, board of adjustments recommendation that it be revisited. I mean, I don't because sure. it could. Is that thought captured in your statement remain subordinate to residential? Yes. Is that? And also for any conditional use throughout the city, uh, by state law, on the year anniversary, we go out and we check to make sure that they're in compliance with the conditions that the Board of Adjustment attaches to it. Okay. And if they are, that's great. And if not, then I send a letter to ABC, this needs to be done to come back into compliance. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Call the roll, please. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. If there is no other business to come before the commission tonight, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. All right.